Well, hello there! I hope you're having an amazing day and I have to say that I'm really glad to see you back here to continue our discussion about cargo and its commands! In the previous video, we covered a bunch of cargo commands. So in this one, I'm going to try to cover the most important one of them all and that is cargo new. I'm certain that if you had to guess, you would be completely fine on your own to figure out what this command does for us. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to tell you anyways. So, cargo new command creates a new blank Rust project for us. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get right into Visual Studio Code and see what it does for us in practice. Great! Now it's time for us to build our first Rust project together. To do that, let's start by clicking on Start menu and start typing for Command Prompt. So you can start typing and you will probably see the result very quickly. Awesome job there! Now let's run our first Rust command here. And to do that, we are going to start typing Cargo New and then you add the name of the project. In our case, I'm going to name it Rust slash 007, of course, James Bond, and then example, for example. And now I want you to follow me through this. Please do not just sit here and watch me do this stuff. You have to go through the process. If you want to learn it and remember it, you need to do it yourself. So please, I'm waiting for you and you just start doing the job with me. Okay, now it's time to hit enter and not much has happened. We just see some green line stating that it's been created for us. Now let's see what actually happened. And as you can see in our file explorer, something did happen. We have a project folder and it's called exactly the same as we named our project. Let's open it inside of our Visual Studio code. And inside of it, you can see a bunch of files. It's not empty, as I said. So let's cover what we got here. Do not worry you're going to get very comfortable with all of these files very shortly. I'm going to cover some of them in this video and some of them in the next one, but basically you'll be fine with all of them very shortly. So stay tuned. The first thing we have is our source folder and inside of it we have main.rs file. That's our main file and inside of it our main function which is going to represent our entry point into our project. And this file is so important that I will dedicate an entire video for it. Then we have our target folder. And you know what to expect inside of it already, right? You'll get your executable files as soon as you have compiled the project. Besides that, we have git ignore file. This one was created by Cargo for us because Cargo wants to prepare everything to be ready for us to use Git. If you already do not know what Git is, it's a source control tool. And if you want to get into programming, you'll definitely want to check it out because it makes our lives so much more easy and enjoyable. So please have a moment and take a look at Git if you're not already familiar with it. But now let's get back to it in Rust. So Cargo just wants us to be ready to use Git as soon as we want it. So it has this pre-built file for us. So now let me tell you a small part that you want to know just for the future reference. I told you that you have Git ignore file pre-built for us. And maybe you do not want your project to be Git ready. Maybe you just want to practice or you want some example project or something like that that you know for a fact is never going to be uploaded to Git. So if that is the case, we have a small flag which is going to indicate to Cargo that we do not want our project to be Git ready. And to do that, let me show you in practice. We're going to do everything exactly the same way as previous time. So Cargo, New, and then Rust 007 example dash without Git, for example. And then we're just going to include this flag, which is going to indicate to Cargo that it should not create any Git ignore files for us. And that is VCS none. And when we execute this, we again got our folder ready. And when we open it in Visual Studio Code, 
you will see that it does not contain git ignore file, which means that our command worked. And finally, we have cargo toml and cargo log files. So they're basically our next topic. So stay tuned for that. And those are all the files that were created by Cargo for us initially. And that's everything about Cargo new you need to know for now. Welcome back. We are done with our talk about Cargo new command. So right now you are familiar with all the basics about it and what it actually does for us. I think this is a very good moment to end this video and continue our discussion about cargo files in the next video. So there is only one thing left and that is to wish you an amazing day. Goodbye.